A lot of people single out the Wii U as a spectacular failure, but it really isn't alone. 8th Gen, the gen comprising the Wii U, Xbox One, PS4, the upcoming Switch, and several other devices has been the biggest failure and disappointment in gaming yet. But why? I'd like to share my observations and some opinions from my perspective. I'm going to try to focus more on actual facts and hard information though. Much more than most people who make videos like this. Yet Microsoft is going to force me to make educated guesses. Also, yes, the Switch is 8th gen, though it's probably going to be 9th too. Unless it does poorly, which I don't think it will when we get done looking at why 8th gen has been such a mess. I think it's the only device trying to remedy the mistakes everyone has made. I suppose the best place to start is the Wii U, since it kicked off 8th gen which I am confident is a huge reason it struggled. Nintendo did something really stupid. They tried to get the jump on the competition by setting the bar relatively low. Low enough Sony and Microsoft could easily come in with something a bit more powerful, and yeah, that is exactly what happened. <laughs> what did Nintendo expect? Power is not everything, though. The PS2 and the Wii, the weakest entries from their generations, were the leaders. But Nintendo made other mistakes. A popular claim is that the name Wii U confused everybody into thinking it was a redesign of the Wii, and the ending focus of the Wii U reveal positioned the console as a fireworks simulator. I doubt both of these claims, the latter is just a joke that a handful of people present in complete seriousness, and the former is a claim I have never seen substantiated apart from one graph that indicates roughly the same number of people who were pre-ordering saw clarification of if it was a new console. Branding was Microsoft's mistake, but I'll get to that soon. My experience has been more people never even heard of the Wii U, period. Not that they think it is something else. They literally have no idea Nintendo released anything besides the 3DS after releasing the Wii. Nintendo really didn't market the Wii U. They marketed some of the games, but didn't have much highlighting the device or showing a sizzle reel on TV or the internet. Just the E3 presentation, only longtime fans and media made a point to tune into, and it impressed very few. Nintendo had few exclusives beyond Nintendo Land and New Super Mario Bros. U, and little else exclusive announced later on. Sure, there were some eShop exclusives and games like SingStar, but those hardly justifying buying a 300 plus console, and a lot of the Wii crowd wasn't aware of the Wii U. Then, in the January after release, no games released besides two indie eShop games. Many of the consumers who knew passed seeing no hardcore games coming, and with few exciting new games, there was little discussion about the Wii U until games like Smash Brothers and Xenoblade were announced. But at that point, it was little too late for most, and the PS4 was winning. The claim many make against the Wii U I found is valid with Microsoft's handling of the Xbox One. When Sony re-released the PlayStation after releasing the PS2, they called it the PS1. When I first heard the name Xbox One, for months I thought it was some kind of souped up re-release of the Xbox. And I know a lot of people who still think it is some awkward revival that can play Xbox games natively because it has essentially identical hardware, but can play new games because the hardware is stronger. I eventually looked more into it and realized the name Microsoft chose was weird and just confused people. It didn't help Microsoft was trying to push things like DRM as great features either. Gotta love that DRM. Or that they have continually cancelled their big games. The Xbox One has done so poorly, one year Microsoft tried to report large numbers of Xboxes sold, which retailers revealed were overwhelmingly 360s. And then they just stopped giving numbers, instead combining users who logged into online across the 360, Xbox One, and Windows 10. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure Microsoft wants to get out of consoles this gen, and consume the PC platform. At least that's what I get from their press conferences focusing on Windows 10 and automatic Xbox integration and parity. So the last thing we know, the Wii U was outselling the Xbox One. So it's actually very possible it still is, or is just passing the Wii U because Nintendo gave up on it. So why is the PS4 a success with shameful quotes? You want to know the truth? The PS3 was actually the dominant console in 7th gen. The Wii sold way more systems, but lost its way, 
And that is why few were excited to see only old ports and casual games announced for the Wii U. The Wii betrayed the fans of the GameCube, which in truth was every bit neck and neck with PlayStation 2 when you subtract those who bought the PS2 almost exclusively as a DVD player. Gimmicks may sell units, but it won't automatically make you dominant. The PS4 had the success of the PS3 to ride on, and a majority of the popular RPGs and third-party games. But if you look at handhelds, then 8th gen isn't quite a failure, but it is disappointing. While the PS4 is done abysmally, the 3DS is in a good position. Not great, just good. As the 3DS comes to an end, it falls disappointingly short of any other handheld, even the PSP. Yet it is still the 8th gen victor by quite a bit. At home consoles and handhelds, just like the original DS was the dominant device looking at home consoles and handhelds, the 3DS's success is much the same as the PS4. It is riding off of the titan that was the DS, and it has a corner on the RPG market that the PS4 could never dream of having. The Vita failed much like the Wii U, because it struggled to receive notable games for a long time and couldn't get the RPGs even just as much as the PSP. Apart from the gimmick consoles like the PS2 and Wii, Sales have been steadily declining, and I have a guess why this is. Going from 3rd to 4th gen, you got over 10 times the color, parallax, and a bunch of new buttons. Going to 5th gen, you had polygons and fully scalable visuals and control sticks and rumble. Going to 6th gen, you had much more complex polygons, and way more could be done and wireless controllers appeared. Going to 7th gen, polygons were a little smoother, you had HD resolution and widescreen was mandatory, you could run some better engines, and you got motion controls and online was a real thing that could actually be done in a serious way. Then, going into 8th gen, you got virtually identical polygons, you could run very slightly better engines, and Nintendo gave you a second screen for consoles so you could get rid of the HUD, and Nintendo offered HD resolution. 8th gen had no reason to actually happen except barely Nintendo's case, and 7th gen could have been pushed off. Even 6th gen could have been pushed a couple more years. There just wasn't enough to get people excited in 8th gen with home consoles. They are just 7th gen consoles that can do slightly more. Judging from my pool of people, Gen X moved heavily to become the PC peasant race, and Gen Y just kind of waited to see anything possibly worth playing to be announced with hopes of being able to wait till 9th gen. And in the meantime, they moved to handhelds, where things could actually be improved. This explains why the PS4 Pro failed. It only allows 4K, really, which I think you know I hate, but it doesn't matter to most regardless. Looking at the Switch, it actually has a reason to exist, something to push video games forward. Handhelds just jumped from the 3DS to freaking 8th gen! Or another way to look at it is 8th gen just became small, sleek, wireless, and portable while gaining HD feedback. Furthermore, the Switch is gimmickless. It doesn't have a DVD player, it isn't pioneering some unrefined technology, it is just pushing the industry forward. Sure, it may have motion controls, but that's a standard now. The 3DS, Vita, Wii U, and PS4 all have standard motion controls. And there are one, maybe two games that will use motion controls in a gimmicky way announced for the Switch, unlike with the Wii and Wii U. Let's look at the Joy-Con compared to the Remote 2. The Wii Remote is a mess because it is designed with motion controls as the focus. The Switch controller can be used to like the Remote, but it has been designed to work as one half of a standard controller as well as an equivalent controller on its own and turn to the side. You play with the Remote on its side and you have a D-pad with a button next to it, two buttons in a normal spot, and a single awkward trigger on the bottom. The remote was designed with motion controls as the priority. The Joy-Cons are designed with being a good controller in two orientations as a priority, and a good motion controller second. Judging by the excitement over the concept and how many ukulele PS4 and PC backers want to make the switch to the... Mm -hmm, the switch? <laughs> it may end up dominating this and next gen, but 8th gen just got interesting. So, do you mostly agree with my perspective? Or have you seen facts that contradict my experience and interpretation? Be sure to leave a comment if you disagree or even agree and share this video to keep the discussion going. 
or respond to my video and leave a link to your response in the comments. Oh, and have a good day today and every day. Oh, and don't forget these guys. And him. I think that's where they're gonna be. <laughs> Where's my stop button? <laughs>